Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where every day we explore how technology is transforming our life, our work, entire industries, and even world. And today, I want to delve into the topic of health tech and telemedicine. And a company called Curve Health is an elderly care telemedicine platform that is installed directly into nursing homes and skilled nursing facilities. And the company also announced a $6 million seed round late last year. And I wanted to learn more about how they're using technology to reduce unnecessary hospital transfers from those skilled nursing facilities. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to New York, where Tim Peck, founder of Curve Health, is waiting to speak with us now. A massive warm welcome to the show, Tim. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me, Neil. I appreciate it. Uh, so Tim Peck, I'm an I'm a entrepreneur and an emergency physician. Um, emergency physician by training, but I'm the, the president and, and chair and founder of Curve Health. Um, Curve is a telemedicine company that connects physicians uh, from hospitals to treat patients in nursing homes, uh, elder care homes. And uh, we do so quite successfully, uh, decreasing unnecessary hospitalizations, which takes a lot of waste and cost out of the system and improves uh, the lives of very vulnerable patients. And the topic of nursing homes is huge at the moment. There's a big focus on there, especially during the global pandemic and how that, that area has been managed. But just to set the scene for everyone listening all over the world, can you tell them a little bit more about what uh, Cur- Curve Health is and what it is that makes you different from other solutions out there? One thing that makes us different um, as a, a telemedicine solution, and telemedicine really is a, a grab bag kind of word, a uh, catch-all kind of word, where we're much more than that. We're essentially a remote hospital system with uh, all the, the the human factors being uh, managed, the and then the staff, the, the the data being managed with lots of integrations into other data sources, and and then there's there's also a telemedicine tool. But what makes us different is that we've been around for a while and telemedicine is a, a booming uh, economy right now. It's a, a booming tool that people are, are grabbing onto. Uh, but we started really exploring telemedicine back in the early 20 teens uh, when we started uh, the predecessor company to Curve, uh, the company that uh, Curve's technology um, is based off of. There's only Two percent of doctors had ever used telemedicine. Uh, as of about a month ago, it was eighty-five percent of doctors. So the curve has um, really caught up uh, in this industry, and um, we've been riding that to be able to treat these patients. So uh, what we do is we're a data and technology company, and we create the, the platform for physicians uh, agnostic to we're agnostic to which physicians use our platform. It could be physicians at hospitals. It could be uh, local primary care physicians. Either way, they, they get onto the platform and they treat patients in nursing homes who normally don't have access 24 seven to physicians. Um, on top of that, we're a technology enabled services company. So we have someone called the care traffic controller who sits in the cloud. Uh, This is a nurse or an EMT uh, professional who is there to help uh, the doctors on one side, uh, you know, get through any of the challenges they may have in their day, uh, managing these patients electronically, and then also help the nurses on the nursing home side do their jobs, really be a a friend, a a co-pilot to them. Um, and be able to, to to treat these patients successfully. And there is so much talk at the moment around how technology is transforming this space. Uh, presumably, you've got quite a number of partnerships and funding in place. Is that right? <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. So uh, the funding was 
the, the story of this company is, uh, again, I, I formed a company out of uh, Y Combinator, the you know, famed incubator accelerator of companies um, out in Silicon Valley, Dropbox, Airbnb, Reddit, and, and we were one of the first technology, uh, health technology companies that they incubated back in 2015. Um, that company was called Call9, and uh, it had a pretty great rise to be able to treat um, hundreds of thousands of patients. And it's a very similar model, uh, but um, and, and successful with the, the private payers, uh, the insurance companies and the what are called the Medicare Advantage companies. But the government pay company, uh, gov- government pay, Medicare, uh, didn't have the rules in place at the time to be able to treat uh, and be paid for treating patients over telemedicine. So we were a bit ahead of the curve, which is where the new company's name comes from. We shut that company down in May of 2019 and said, okay, we're going to need to wait till Medicare gets itself together and we'll, we'll put the technology on the shelf and live to play another day. Well, that other day happened less than a year later in March of 2020 and the pandemic you know, hit the Western world at that point and um, the entire entire world changed overnight. And uh, in the U.S., we were able to completely um, change over uh, the rules on on how Medicare pays for telemedicine, and that allowed access to it. At that point, it took the technology off the shelf, as I said, incubated the company again um, at IDEO, the uh, famed uh, you know, world-class design firm, um, and was able to, to create some uh, incredible UI UX uh, with, within their partnership. Um, and then from there, uh, was able to raise money quite quickly from Lightspeed Ventures leading the round, the $6 million seed round, uh, and we'll head into a Series A in a few months from now. And what I love about what you're doing here is using your technology, you set out to reduce unnecessary hospital transfers from skilled nursing facilities by up to 80%, which is incredible. But can can I ask that you share that grand vision? From a macroeconomic standpoint in the US, it's about um, 2 million transfers in the US, uh, that two thirds of which are avoidable. Uh, from the nursing home to the hospital. Another way to to slice those numbers is that 19% of the ambulances that go to the emergency department originate from nursing homes. And so one out of five of those patients rolling up to the emergency department are are from this population. As an emergency physician, individually on, on you know, treating these patients. Um, when I was, I, I left traditional medicine largely to solve this problem. But treating them, the, the care that I was able to give these patients is quite poor. Um, even at a world-class institution that I was working at, I was working at one of the Harvard hospitals at the time. And uh, the reason for this is a, a, a total lack of ability to know that patient, what they need, who they are. The reason for that is that interoperability, communication between the nursing home world and the outpatient nursing home world and the inpatient hospital world is is nil. So you wouldn't get much information on these patients. So what do you do? You ask the patient. However, 48% of the patients that um, we treat uh, uh, have dementia. Um, And so that makes it quite difficult. And then upon the transfer to the emergency department, people become delirious and, and confused. Um, and in a busy emergency department, when you have a gunshot in the other room, you, you don't really have the time to call a family member or an advocate. And so you wind up ordering every test under the rainbow just to try to find what's going on and, and move these patients on into the hospital from the emergency department um, as quickly as possible. And, and that just creates a, a a scenario in which you're admitting people to the hospital, whether they need it or not, um, whether they really need it or not, and, and, and sending them back to the nursing home, the case management's just too great to do in the emergency department. So they have the stay in the hospital, which is upwards of $20,000 on average. So um, that's, that's the, the core kind of issue we're trying to solve. And so by putting 
telemedicine, but also interoperability you know, data products where we plug into the EMRs of the hospitals. We plug into the EMRs of the uh, nursing homes and we can create this data bridge where there's visibility, 360 visibility around the patient, no matter you know, where they are you're able to have a much better viewpoint of who they are to be able to treat them properly in place and, and kind of bring the care to the person rather than shipping the person around to the care and be able to avoid those hospitalizations that are unnecessary. And of course, as this is a daily tech podcast, I've got to ask, how is technology going to help you bring that vision to life? Uh, that's a great question. So uh, again, yeah, I am a technologist that been playing in the technology uh, space for some time. Uh, this company here, Curve, are, were led on the CTO side by a wonderful woman, Cheryl Poro, who um, was early in on Salesforce. And when she left Salesforce to, to come over, it's about 35,000 people there. So she <laughs> meteoric rise. Um, and she, uh, she was SVP of the .org side when she left. So uh, she's, she's helping us uh, build out this, this uh, pretty massive tech stack. So um, the technology pieces are really around being able to have incredible design of getting the, the right information at the right time, just in time information to be able to treat patients uh, better than you can even treat them in the hospital or, or the nursing home without the technology. So by not only grabbing the data, integrating into these various data sources and bringing into a single platform, but then making sure that you're doing very diligent uh, design research to be able to see what people need and what humans need to be able to do their job and do it in such a way that because you're in front of a computer screen when treating the patients, you have the ability to put data in front of them that they wouldn't have if they're walking around the hospital um, uh, that, that is relevant to the case of the patient that they're treating. Um, we're able to uh, make these experiences which actually have, have led to much better outcomes than, um, than, than in some of the physical spaces. And just to bring to life what we're talking about here, are there any use cases you could possibly share that would just help anyone listening understand how it could work it work in their world too? Yeah, certainly. So a you know, patient um, is confused or has a fever uh, and the nurse goes to the bedside and, and sees that. They simply take a phone out of their pocket. A lot of telemedicine is a is kind of, okay, now in the scenario, the nurse has to go find a, a big kind of telepresentation, big computer screen uh, to on wheels to go, you know, take out of the closet and, and, and roll down the, the hallway. It's a, it's a very different program than that. You have a, a phone in your pocket that you take out, tap an app, um, and that uh, phone then uh, connects to a physician at, who's at home remote 24 seven, always available on their laptop. Now, most telemedicine that we might be used to as consumers, especially over the uh, pandemic is serial in nature. So you're a relatively healthy person, you have a cough, you see your, your doctor for five minutes, maybe you've sat in a, a virtual waiting room before you did, that doctor sees you, moves on to the next patient, to the next patient. The patients we're talking about are sick. They have pneumonia, they have heart issues, they have um, you know, emphysema, they have things that, are, uh, that need a lot of attention and it takes a lot more than five minutes. In fact, it takes days to treat these patients. And so just like in the emergency department or the hospital where a doctor would go into room one and jump over to room six and back to room one, we've created an environment, a virtual environment where Everybody is in their virtual rooms and the doctor can walk in and out of it whenever they want to, to treat these patients. And whenever they go into that room, that virtual room, all of the, all of the data, all of the information is there. The nurse is there either physically by the patient's bedside, or sometimes that nurse is, uh, you know, walked away from the 
the actual geographic room, but it's still in this virtual room because they're now at the nurse's station or on another floor taking care of a patient, they could be there. Um, the family member can be piped into that virtual room as well to give information as well as be a support to the, to the patient. Uh, the patient uh, might be downstairs in the cafeteria. They still can be in that virtual room if when given uh, the technology, the, the you know, phone or tablet is what we use for them to be able to be in the, in the room as well. It's, it's, we've created this virtual hospital that has thousands and thousands and thousands of rooms in it for our physicians, for our patients, for nurses, et cetera, to come, come in and out of. Um, and whenever they're there, all the right information that you need at the right time is also there for them. And as we do have an international audience, where do you cover at the moment? Is it just the US? And if it is, do you have any plans to expand? Yeah, we, we started in the U.S., um, so uh, in New York, and then California, Minnesota, and we're, we're pretty, uh, you know, we just got this company up and off the ground uh, about a year ago, so pretty rapid expansion to be in, in three pretty large states at this point, um, moving through the U.S., but always have our sights on, on, other, uh, on other areas, too. And I've got to ask, what is it that excites you about the road ahead and the role that technology will increasingly play in, in healthcare as, as we continue to progress forward? Because it feels like there's it's just it's so many opportunities in this space right now, isn't there? Yeah, I think uh, the pandemic has shown a light on something that is um, quite true, which is, um, you know, a lot of people will say that the healthcare system is, is broken, um, or the healthcare system is, you know, inefficient. It's not working well for me. And I, you know, I think it's really in the design of the healthcare system that it's just designed this way in which right now it kind of helps. There's a lot of inertia to it. The, um, you know, the, the existence of the healthcare system kind of first exists for itself and then thinks about the patient experience. What the pandemic has done, especially for, the you know healthy consumer, but also as you talked about in the very beginning of this, you know, nursing homes have been quite in the news as a place where experience needs to be improved. What it's done is put put a spotlight on that patient experience, put a spotlight on saying, hey, the patient experience matters and hey, healthcare system, you can create things to come to me. You don't have to make me come to the the hospital and wait in the waiting room on your schedule. You don't have to, you know, make me come to the hospital and be exposed to sick, a sick patients when I'm not sick. And this mindset change has allowed us uh, in this moment to have this window open to introduce more desirability, more um, uh, patient experience, more UI UX into this into this world uh, to be able to reach patients in such a way that they actually enjoy that's made for their lives and fits into their life journeys rather than disrupting their lives to, to fit into the healthcare system. So I think technology plays an enormous part in making that happen. Uh, and in fact, the lead, you know, the lead player in that part. And you yourself have been on quite a journey too. And a question I always like to ask my guests at the end of the podcast is ask them if there's a particular song that has inspired them or accompanied them throughout their career or just helps them get their head in the zone before going on stage or in a big meeting. And then we put all those songs on a Spotify playlist. So is there a particular song that means anything to you that we can add? That's a great question. I don't <laughs> think I've ever been asked that question. There absolutely is. Um, in my office right here behind me, there's um, uh, a friend made this uh, uh, this canvas. She has a great business where she she stretches canvas over and the subwoofer of a uh, and and then plays your favorite song into the canvas. Uh, she puts ink all over the over the the base and then and then plays the the song into the canvas. So it's this uh, circular black. Um, kind of ink blot, uh, but you know that it's the song. Anyway, mine and, and the reason she gave it to me is the, the, the song that I think about and listen to and play myself all the time, which is Five Years by, by David Bowie. The reason I love Five Years is um, 
you know, it has its own uh, script of, of that. But what it, it reminds me is that, you know, in this, you know, fanciful world that he's created, there's, there's kind of five years till the world ends kind of thing. But it, it reminds me that time is limited and that we have um, only a, su- a certain amount of time. We don't know exactly how much that is to be able to accomplish and, and make meaning uh, in the world. And so I wake up every day and I look at that uh, canvas or think about that song and say, what am I going to do with, with my five years? And so, uh, yeah, it's been quite motivational throughout my career. Wow, what a great choice. And for saying that you've never, you've never had anyone ask you that question, the story behind it as well, man, that's why I ask it. It's so much power behind that. I think we'll have to find out where you got that canvas from as well. It's an incredibly cool thing to do. If it's your friend's business, feel free to give her a shout out now. Has she got a website? So the artist's name is Ashley Langan, L-A-N-G-A-N, and her uh, site is vibrato.com uh, v is in victory i b r a t o.com cool well i'll be checking that out but before i let you go um, can you remind everyone listening of where they can find out more details about curve health and and equally contact your team if they've got any questions sure you can go to uh, just www.curvehealth.com uh, and always feel free to look me up on linkedin uh, again name's timothy peck and uh, be be sure to respond well, I just love the grand vision that you've got here and how you're using technology and telemedicine. And uh, I'd love to stay in touch with you, see where this journey leads and the kind of differences that you make. But more than anything, just a big thank you for joining me today on the podcast. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate the time. It was great hearing more about the role that technology will play in healthcare. And if you're listening in the health tech space, or if you are a patient with a view about where the industry is heading, I'd love to hear more. So please email me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Drop by my website, techblogwriter.co.uk. Let's keep this conversation going. I'd love to hear more about your views, your insights, your experiences and your story. But that's it for today. So hopefully you'll join me again tomorrow where we'll do it all again. But a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.